Hello, Brother Eddie. God bless you. This is Brother Boyd London. This is a great program about uh, the cost of following Jesus. Here's a scripture that nobody can hide from on this here. Revelation 20, verse 11. This is the, about the final judgment. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on, on whose face the heaven and earth fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and hates delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one, according to his works. And death and hates were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast in to the lake of fire. So this is saying here that we are going to be judged according to our works. What have you done for Jesus? What have you done for the kingdom of God? What kind of works will you be judged for? We can't get away from this scripture. Every person is going to stand before the throne, stand before God, and be judged according to their works. Have you uh, been living in sin? Is that going to be your work? Are you going to be called the worker of iniquity? In Matthew chapter 7, it says, those who don't do the will of God... And those who have sin in their life and different things like that, Jesus is going to say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Will your works be iniquity, having sin in your life, being selfish? James 4.17 says, if we don't know the good we should do and don't do it, we're living in sin. So these people that are selfish, that don't do the good they're supposed to do, that don't help other people, that don't preach the word of God, they're going to be called workers of iniquity. They're Works are going to be iniquity, sin, not doing the good they should do. The people that haven't got the sin out of their life, you know, they're going to be condemned to hell. That's going to be their works. But if we have truly surrendered to Jesus, we're going to be doing like I called it in my testimony, helping the people in prisons, the needy people, preaching the word of God to people, getting them saved, praying for people, getting them healed, doing good things for Jesus instead of being workers of iniquity. And if we've had the surrendered life, and have truly surrendered to Jesus, living a life full of these good works and doing good things, we're going to be welcomed into heaven. It's something none of us can avoid. What have you done for Jesus? What have you done for the kingdom of God? And if you flip back here just a little bit here, he said, uh, uh, I know your works that you're neither hot nor cold, and he wanted to vomit them out of our mouth. He doesn't like lukewarm Christians. I, don't, I didn't say that. Jesus did. He wanted to spew them out of his mouth, vomit them out of my mouth, being lukewarm. So we're going to be judged according to our works, as it says in Revelation 20, and we need to be on fire for Jesus doing good works. God bless you all. Amen. Place is empty, no more traffic in the streets. All the builders' tools are silent, no more time to harvest wheat. Busy housewives cease their labor in the courtroom, no debate. Work on earth is all suspended. As the king comes through the gate The king is coming The king is coming I just heard the trumpet sounding And now his face I see The king is coming The king is coming Praise God, He's coming for me. Happy faces line the hallways, those whose lives have been redeemed. Broken homes He has mended, those from prison He has freed. Little children and Hand in hand, stand all aglow. Who were crippled, broke 
in ruin, dressed in dark, it's white as snow. The king is coming, the king is coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding, and now his face I see. The king is coming, the king is coming, praise God, he's coming for me. could be any day. Have you counted the cost of following Jesus? Have you got a made up mind? Have you come out from amongst the world? Are you a separated people? What kind of fruit are you bearing on your tree? You see, most of the answers to these questions, you know where you stand with God. You know whether or not you're doing everything you should be doing, or you know whether or not you've got lazy and tired, making up excuses. You know where you're at, and you know where you're supposed to be. I pray if you're listening tonight and you don't know this man, Jesus Christ, that we're talking about, singing about, testifying about, our precious Lord and Savior, that right now, right there, right where you're at, that you would just get things right between you and the Lord, that you would repent and turn from your wickedness, that you would cry out to Jesus with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, that you would die that you may live, that you would count the cost of following Jesus. Won't you reach out and take a hold of that unchanging hand of the great I Am? Won't you allow God to write his word upon the tablet of your heart? Won't you allow God to put you on the turntable, the potter's wheel? For we are the clay and he is the potter. Won't you allow him this night to shape you into what he would have you to be? You know you've tried everything your way. Ain't nothing working out as of to that. It's all been wrong. You know that you're miserable. You have a void that nothing can fill, neither alcohol, drugs, or money, or sex, nor pornography, nothing. You've tried it all. Only Jesus Christ can fill that void in your heart, my friend. Reach out. Take a hold of that unchanging hand. Get a made-up mind. Because you will spend eternity somewhere. Will it be in heaven? Will it be in hell? Are you a sheep or are you a goat? There ain't no in-between ground. You're either lost or you're saved. You're either on your way to heaven or you're on your way to hell. 
there's no middle ground. There's nowhere to stand and say, wait and let me make up my mind. He said, choose you this day. Whom will you serve? Today is the day of salvation. This is your moment. It's not by accident that you've stumbled across this little radio program. No, my friend, it's by heavenly divine appointment. God is reaching out to you. Will you take a hold of the unchanging hand of the great I am, or will you reject Jesus Christ and be condemned already, my friend? The choice is yours, heaven or hell peace and joy or torment and pain. You choose where you want to spend eternity. It's your choice. I pray that you reach out and choose Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the only way to the Father, the truth. I pray right now for you that you've been confused and walking around not knowing what to do. Here's what to do cry to Jesus. Repent from your sins. Cry to Jesus right now. What time you have time, my friend. What time your heart's pumping the blood through your veins because we don't have the promise of the next breath we are to take. Oh man, death is just a heartbeat away. You could leave this world tonight. Where will you spend eternity? You will spend eternity somewhere. It's your choice. We're praying for you. And God sent his only begotten son for you. Now what are you going to do with Jesus? What are you going to do with Jesus? You can pray right now. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Skies are all gray. What do you do during lightning and thunder? Oh, Lord, you can pray. Pray for my Jesus to carry your burden. Pray he will strengthen and light up your way. All right, all right, we're gonna run over here and check the phone. Right? Uh, hello, you've got the Gospel Music Jukebox. We're on the air. Who do we got there? You got this Pastor Eddie Garrett up in Cookville. Amen, Pastor. How's everything in Cookville, Tennessee? Uh, we're doing good, brother. We're, we're blessed. Amen. God is good. He is.